Hello, welcome, and welcome back to the Marnie on the Move podcast. I'm your host, Marnie Salop. Today on the podcast, I am syncing up with one of my favorite running influencers and my friend, Carlette Keys. Carlette has 146,000 followers on Instagram, where she offers tips and advice on running and all things running. She is an 11-time marathoner, mother of two, is currently training for her fifth star in London. Prior to Instagram, she had a 15-year career as an on-air personality and news anchor. But I'll let her dial you in. Now, on to my conversation with Carlette. What inspired you to start and build your Instagram channel and platform? Um, What inspired me? I think it would be myself five years ago. (laughs) <laughs> because I started running, not knowing exactly what I was doing, like many runners do, uh, especially new runners. Um, you know, they, they get into this stage of their life that, oh, I want to start running. I want to try to run a marathon or a half marathon. And they get this plan out of the internet, a free PDF, whatever, they download it somewhere. And they start running like crazy, not knowing that they need to do a recovery routine, that they need to warm up, that they need to foam roll, that they need to eat properly. And uh, and I went ahead and do it. I was training for my first marathon, which was um, New York City Marathon. And it all went well until I crossed a finish line and I discovered that I just uh, trashed both of my knees. Um, I did everything oh wrong when I was, when, as I was training. So um, I just kept thinking, man, if I knew what I know now, um, you know, my, the, the, you know the, the outcome will have been a lot different. Um, so basically I've been sharing my knowledge on my page of uh, what not to do to end up like me, basically, because I'm yeah. at this stage in my life, I'm an injured runner. Um, I run three marathons a year with torn meniscus and now chondral injuries. It is possible, but it takes dedication, discipline, and it didn't have to be this way if I did things right uh, the first time around. Yeah. And basically, that's what you see. That's the content you see in my page. It's like, don't do this why don't you try this instead? (laughs) So beware of not stretching or not warming it up or not doing your recovery process properly. And you also recently started launching training plans for people that they could get your training plans or they could train with you. I know you have a run club. So is that kind of like the next step of what you were doing with your Instagram channel? Yes, well, uh, it was a crazy idea. Um, I'm not a coach myself, and I never intended to be one. But I just realized that a lot of people, uh, they rely on my page uh, for advice because I'm a runner just like them. And uh, I've been injured right. so many times, and I've been running. Uh, I'm going to be running my 11th marathon in April. So I have experience. So they look up to me for, for advice, but I'm not a coach. I don't have the technical knowledge to actually tell somebody uh, what you need to do uh, for your next uh, marathon goal. Um, so uh, this is happening very randomly. We were sitting, we were all traveling for the destination marathons uh, to the Berlin Marathon. And during a post-race uh, party that the destination marathons had for us, we were drinking beer, amazing German beer, and one of the guests, uh, she, she just realized that most of the people that travel with destination marathons, they do the same marathons all the time. So we kind of get together uh, during those uh, marathon weekends. So she's like, it's so funny that we don't have a training plan that can bring us all together that we can all follow. And they're like, well, we're all coaches. And that's what's happened. Right. They're all coaches. They can actually design the plan for the next manager. And, um, and they initially was intended for maybe the destination marathon crowd, but they saw me and they're like, you have a huge community of people interested in doing the same marathons. Why don't we extend this uh, idea to all of them? Because I keep doing all these checkout runs too. Yeah. 
Actually, my run club started before the training plan. So I already had this community that I, I used to go out for runs, right. that I used to meet wherever I go. And um, and I said, you know what? Yes, I, I have the audience for this and they're in need of coaches like you guys. And so let's do this. And we just finished actually our live uh, on Instagram uh, with our community of runners. That's amazing. You know, I am a certified Ironman coach and I can tell you that like going through the training program was great, but the 12 years of experience I have competing in 70.3 and running is like the right mix because you can be a coach and not have the experience and you can have a ton of experience and not be a coach. But I think if you have a ton of experience and you're not like officially saying you're a coach, you definitely have knowledge as to what works for you and maybe you can share with someone that story and I think you're you're a great coach like I would ask you advice I mean even though I am a coach right I've done all the technical stuff but I want to know like from you because you've done 11 marathons like I had Ken write out on my podcast the other day he's done 51 like there's one thing to know the data and the numbers but there's another thing to talk to someone who has the experience, who has tried so many things. So I think it's great, you know, and, and I love your run club, like in New York City, when we got together, I mean, there's something about like, there's a lot of run clubs, and there's a lot of coaches, but it's all about the community and the vibe that you are giving off in your community. So and there's so much room for everyone. So I think it's wonderful. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, that's actually the, from all this experience I've been having, you know, during these past three years, uh, having a Carlette Keys account and doing the run club. This is the most fun just to get to meet uh, all the people that support me from the other side of the phone. And I keep having these conversations yeah. with them over DMs for years. And then finally I get to say, listen, I'm going to be in your city next week. Let's go for a run. So it's just like, so it's marvelous, you know, it's, it's to get to meet somebody that has been following your journey or each other's journeys, because, you know, that's how I start my conversation with them. They tell me their stories and, you know, and, and it's, it's amazing to share all this information and experiences that we had in our running lives. Uh, it's a lot easier to run with a group. Like I really really wish I had a group right now in my neighborhood. And I've been thinking about this for a long time because it is hard to get out and, and run by yourself in the cold. I mean, it's 28 degrees here, which isn't zero, but it's pretty cold. And if, you know, if I had some accountability, you know, down, and it has to be in my neighborhood, like I'm not going to go to Central Park and go for a run. Like I, it will take me longer to get to Central Park than it will take me to run. So you know, right now for me in this weather and these temps, so I'm like reaching out to people in my building to see if they want to come meet me for a run. Like, and I'm not coaching anyone. Like I am a slow runner. I am like just going for a run. If you want to join me, put your headphones on, like just the motivation, like the accountability, like yes. we can go for coffee or whatever after, but it's like such an amazing thing. And the running community, it's like, everybody gets that, right? Like you get it. Like we started talking you're like, this is the hardest time to run, but it's also a great time to run. Mm -hmm. Winter. <laughs> yes, winter is hard. Winter is, is challenging and it can be very, very lonely too. And you're in Madrid, so you have the same, kind of the same weather as us in New York, right? Oh, like it's pretty no, cold it's there. Not, it's not as brutal, it's not as brutal as New York. That's what oh. I love from Madrid. Uh, but I'm starting here. I, I mean, it's just like, I'm trying to find my niche. Uh, I went with, mm -hmm. um, with a group that is already established in El Retiro Park, which is kind of like uh, the central park of New York. And uh, it was nice, but I'm like, okay, I need to run longer distances because they were doing 5Ks and I'm like, I need to run yeah. my mile. So I just actually, you know, pop out like a story today and said, who wants to run with me nine miles around Madrid? And a lot of people have answered. I'm yeah. like, oh, nice. Okay. I mean, there's just such a huge difference, even if you're running even if you're running with a group and nobody is the same pace, at least you're like all meeting somewhere or checking in in the beginning. I don't know. I, that's one of the things I love about running and cycling too. Right. And I mean, before you got into running, I mean, you are obviously really great on camera. You have such amazing videos that you create. I mean, they are really professional. Yeah. So talk to me about your background because before you were making the videos and producing them, you were just, you were on camera. Yes, I was, uh, for 15 years, I was a newscaster. 
And um, I, I basically said goodbye to all of that after I, I was, uh, I got pregnant with my first uh, child. And I wanted to become a mom. I wanted to take a huge sabbatical um, and raise my kids. So I had two amazing boys. And when I wanted to restart my career in television, I was living this first time around in Madrid. That was, uh, for, I don't know, probably seven years ago. Um, I wanted to um, to start working here also in the same area, in the same industry, in media. And I didn't get the chance to do it. Um, it's, it's different. You know, I, I don't have the Spanish accent from, from Spain. I don't know if you know that there's a difference between Latin American accent and okay. Spanish accent from Spain. Um, so yeah, yes. it was a hard sell for me and, uh, I decided to start a new business with a friend and that's how, how actually mastered, uh, video producing because I learned how to, um, produce videos with professional cameras, edit. I was self-taught editing on, on Premiere Pro, doing this amazing content. Uh, but this business didn't, um, I mean, didn't survive. Uh, we didn't get the second round of uh, for financing and, you know, I just kept the equipment and decided to give it a good use on running because that's about the time I started running too. I started to uh, train for, for, for New York City and then COVID hit and I'm like, how? What about now that I was doing all these lonely runs in the city when everybody left the city during COVID? Um, so I will bring my cameras, my action cameras, my drone to, you know, record myself running. And when I started posting that on my Instagram, that's when people started to follow. And the brands, you know, yeah. soon, you know, started to, to, uh, to notice, you know, the impact. And, and that's how it all happened. And you were one of the pioneers with the running with the action cameras during races. And you were talking to camera and also like talking to other people while you were running. Yes. I mean, that's a really, that's yeah. really hard. I mean, I tried, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. It's funny because, Are you, you know, running that, that's, fast? yeah, no, no. I mean, that's, the, I mean, that's the thing. That's why I wanted to do, to try to do these um, interviews at the beginning when you what they weren't a thing. Now they are more common. You see them more common and, you know, on the platform. But uh, when I started, because I'm a reporter by nature, I'm a journalist. So I, I like to tell yeah. stories. And when you do a conversational run, that's what you do. You, you run with somebody, a long run, and you get to know each other. You need to have that conversational pace. So that's why, you know, for me, it's a good practice to have a camera with me asking questions and have this you know, familiar conversation with, with the runner next to you. Yeah. Um, so I, that's how I learned to slow down because I was doing all my easy runs like really fast, which again, I didn't know. They oh, that's had interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Many yeah. mistakes were done. Yeah. Well, I find that it's, it's so hard. Yeah. I actually was talking to someone the other day and they were like, oh, my zone two pace is walking. They were like, I never do my zone two pace. And I was like, uh oh, <laughs> you got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah, it can be boring when you don't hit like, but you have to get distracted. I remember seeing Hela, Hela Wood. I don't know if you follow him. Um, yeah. He, he, yeah, I do. He, yeah, he actually gave a great tip, and a lot of people decided to take that kind of challenge. Like, how to run with a tennis ball. Do you see that? Like he was running and he was no, like, I have to watch it. I didn't off see a, it. a tennis ball just to make it run slower because you're more like trying to get the ball and bouncing it back and forth. And that's how you get your nice, easy run, you know, getting in your, you know, zone two uh, quality run that you need to get. Um, so, yeah, that's another good tip. I kind of, I like to talk when I'm running, but zone two, I mean, if I'm talking to someone, then I'm actually doing zone two, but... I always run, I think I run a little bit high zone too when I'm running by myself. Yeah, it's, I mean, it all depends on the music that you listen or to. Or singing. I mean, also, another trick that I have is just to, oh, singing. You like to sing when running? I do. I mean, sometimes towards the end, people in New York think I'm crazy, which is so much fun. Like, I'm running on the West Side Highway with, like, <laughs> my giant headphones, and I'm, like, singing Taylor Swift. <laughs> and I don't know the words. Like, by the way, I don't know any words. I'm totally tone deaf. I have the worst singing voice. But at least You're I'm like New York City Because, breathing. you know, when you, you're, you're with your big headphones and singing, nobody really pay attention to you. They're like completely ignoring you. Like, okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> totally. It's so funny. I laugh. I also laugh a lot because it's, so you're training for the London Marathon and you are in Madrid right now. What, um, yes. so what's, where are you in your training? Like what mileage are you at? Oh, so far I'm doing 30 miles on average, uh, a week. And which week. is yeah. actually good news because before I couldn't run more over 20 miles a week. Um, when I was really injured, I trained, I mean, my training for Berlin was crippled um because of my knee issues so i decided mm -hmm. to cancel my, my other two races after that new york and valencia so i could concentrate on london and i don't know if you've been following my page you i mean i that's i show that i've been getting all these prp injections hyaluronic acid injections doing all these pt treatments uh with this amazing doctor i found here in madrid and I see the results because for the first time mm -hmm. in a long time, I've been running uh, 30 miles a week, uh, which is actually should be a, a healthy yeah. um, base for uh, any runner, you know, that's starting to train for.